study session is all about improving your knowledge, learning new skills and making new friendships from around the world. My name is Ellen. My name is Ada Hansen. My name is Kaz Khan. And my name is Kasha. Hi, my name is Daniela. My name is Daine. My name is Daniel Munir. And I'm a part of Unga Helsingskadade from Sweden. And I am from Finland. And I'm from the United Kingdom. I work for Kotler Implant International Community of Action, which shortened for KEKA. I'm coming from Turkey and I don't have any organization. I'm, and I'm a member of the Swedish organization. For I am from the UK and I am part of KEKA organization. If you have a cochlear implant or hearing aids, it does not matter. You are brave. It was my first time to be part of this study session. And this is something that I want to take back to the UK and be able to bring everyone, all the people who are deaf and hard of hearing, all into one roof and we can share our experiences. I thank the information given about campaigning and about specific UNC RPD articles that affect deaf people's daily lives, for example, related to mobility, related to access to information, related to education, the right to education. Many of the sessions that taught me about this have given me the tools and an understanding that I can take with me back home and help to help me to work with other hard of hearing people to improve things. I think it's been very funny to be here because they have many fun events and I got to meet new people from different places in the world and I have learned a lot. The thing that is so great about the study session is that we're all hard of hearing. So this is a, sort of a safe space where you are allowed to practice your English skills at the level that you are uh, and the feel and sure that everyone here knows exactly what it's like to be hard of hearing and everyone has at some point felt insecure about using uh, a foreign language uh, but, uh, because of uh, their hearing. Mm, for me it was meeting people from all over the world, um, like Uganda, Canada, but also from many countries in Europe. I really enjoyed like talking to them and um, getting insight into their um, culture and how they they especially like coping with their hearing loss because I feel like every country is different with that and um, yeah this was like the most interesting part for me. I think I've learned a lot about leadership which was the topic um, and I feel more comfortable taking on leadership positions in the future. Discrimination is a big problem in Poland. Um, yeah. Uh, our presentation is, a, is about health, specifically mental health, um, and our mo most important intention was to improve the mental health of hard of hearing young people. And the idea behind this, or the goal behind this, is um, to improve the health of hard of hearing young people by using kind of new tool. Uh. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I was the course director of this study session. In this study session, we had chosen to focus on organizational and individual development, particularly the education and skills involved in effective and influential leadership when advocating for a better hearing access accessibility. Because over the year, the study session have been held been little on focus on organizational leadership as well as on the representation of young people with disability in our media, let alone advocating for disability right. So in this study session, we wanted to focus on equip equipping, empowering and bringing together hard of hearing leaders who have the desire to create a more accessibility world. We know that this kind of work can be exhausting not only as a young adult, but also as a young person with a disability. And that was the main reason why we organized this study session, in where we bring together young hard of hearing leaders from all over the world to meet in a safe place where they can exchange 
their view and experience and, and not be shy about their, their heart of hearing. Participants of the study session were asked to describe in one word what does this even mean for them, or to describe what does Eifrochip in general, which was the co-organizer of the study session, mean to them. What association comes to their mind? As you can see, very diverse examples came up. That adjectives and words sum up in one word why Eifrochip and its events such as the study session are important for its members and young heart of hearing people worldwide. Hello, my name is Maria and I was one of the study session pre preparatory team members. Coming to this study session, we had the list of the aims and goals and uh, we had uh, in theory the idea how uh, will this uh, event look like. But uh, of course, the the imagination versus reality is always uh, different, and I was really impressed. Like the most impressive uh, moment for me was when, at the beginning of study session, I could see one of the uh, participants who was very shy and very scared of public speaking, for example, and gradually. By the end of the week, uh, she became much more empowered and uh, at the beginning she did not speak uh, even one word at public and at the end of the study session she gave us a two minute long speech and I can't even really express how proud I was of this person and how big it was for me. It was not just uh, teaching uh, participants of uh, their right and educating them uh, to be more aware of uh, the right that they can use. Giving, it's not about just giving them tools, but it's also about somehow making them more confident. And for me, it was one of the most moving moments in the entire study session. 1.5 billion people with hearing loss across the world. 6.2% of Europe is hard of hearing. It means that uh, in Europe, just Europe, uh, we have 57.3 million of hard of hearing people. 30% of those out of hearing people experience psychological distress. They might be more anxious, they might be uh, less self-confident, they might be um, more um, exposed to depression, to anxiety, to many other disorders, just because of having to live with hearing loss. I also know that it's not easy to to be different, to be the other in the society that is focused on being uh, perfect, on having perfect body and perfect capability, uh, when we all have different needs, especially being hard of hearing. So that is, uh, I think, most important uh, in organizing this event like study session here, to show those all young people from all around the world that we're not alone and that we have similar struggle. And even even uh, if the struggle does not uh, disappear magically, it always somehow for me at least personally uh, easier to come back to my country and to uh, to think in my head that there are over there many people like me that I'm not <clears throat> the other because I'm hard of hearing, but actually we can create the community where we are just kind of unique, I think, and this is something I want our participants to feel too, that they are the part of the much bigger community than it, uh, than it might look like. It's not that they are just alone individual in the country, but there are many individuals like you, like me, like people around me who have similar struggles, but knowing that 
it's much easier to advocate for our rights, to, to fight for something, to, to change the, the reality, to overcome our limits. And that is something I want each one of participants to carry with them into the future. To maybe create something we don't even dare to dream about now. Preparing for this study session was a big challenge for us, and we started planning as early as 2020. At that time, we didn't know how much the corona would affect us, and then our study session was postponed actually a few times. A year and a half later, we held an online study session in the summer of 2021, and considering all the technical issues and accessibility problems we had, our participants were still very engaged and gave us very positive feedback. This meant a lot to us as a prep team, and we were very happy about this, but at the same time, we realized that there are many aspects of leadership that cannot be taught over the internet, or at least it's limited. And there are certain aspects of learning that can only be experienced in person, sort of where the magic happens, you know? There are many details, that we had to discuss and double check in order to make sure that the in-person study session was accessible for hard of hearing young people. And also because we wanted to make sure that it would work well for the diverse group of participants that we admitted to the study sessions. And we also wanted to check that the loops, palantypists and screens were working and also taking into account the diverse level of English skills between our participants. Our educational advisor told us that our study session was one of the few that survived the COVID-9 pandemic. On the one hand, it's a bit sad given the importance of human rights education. However, we're also a bit um, proud that we actually survived the pandemic or our study session survived it and that we held it both online and that we did an in-person person version. So there was an activity where we had our participants put together 40 different spaghetti sticks, one piece of marshmallow and masking tape to build the tallest tower they could build. And the whole point was really to get them exposed to stepping into a new group figuring out your roles as a leader, um, as a helper, as a timekeeper, as an organizer, um, researching strategies, as well as trying to get along with your colleagues and be open to different ideas. And we also had the opportunity to share and celebrate someone's birthday, um, which was really nice because we took time out of our day to do that and um, just surprised this birthday boy with a cake and sang him a a song which I think was really really touching because I don't think he expected it and he was away from home and I'm sure like it's nice to celebrate your birthday with your friends so what a nice thing to celebrate your birthday um, with a bunch of strangers and it's just kind of kind of touching in that sense <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, <laughs>